Good morning and welcome to Women Now. You know, immigration has been a hot topic ever since President Trump was running for presidency and a year later after he became president. President Obama had set up a situation where immigrants that were coming in on H-1 visas could bring their spouses, of course, on the H-4, and he made a rule where they could actually authorize them to work, which was an H-4 EAD. <music> So let's talk about that situation. You're currently in an H-4. Yeah. Uh, and you don't have an EAD, which no. is the Employment Authorization. So, you know, talk about a life, uh, a day in the life of Priya. What's it like right now? Okay, so it's like in the morning, Piyush gets up. I mean, he goes to office. I'm at home, you know, completing the daily chores. And I mean, waiting for him to come back. Either I can watch TV, I can do some work i mean which i have on my own uh, apart from that there is nothing i would say constructive you okay. know which will benefit my career which i can do apart right. from if i go studying join a college so it's like a pretty much stay at home kind of life right now which i'm having and it's really frustrating so do you think that um on a personal level uh that that stress translates into other parts of your life that personal stress of the inability to be work it's like i keep on using the analogy of handcuffs I mean yeah definitely there's a lot of stress when he comes back he expects you know I should be in good mood or something but you know daily sitting at home all day doing yeah. almost nothing it's it's I mean it's really really frustrating yeah. when he comes back I'm still not in good mood you know we just got married like it's not even been a year it's been right. just nine months we are right. married you know that's a time then you know it being the best time of your life but right. that's not what's actually happening I mean right. yeah we are happy together but then you know it's like my life has taken a halt right. totally completely right. just because I got married because uh, I back in India I have an MBA I have an MBA from a reputed institute in India wow. I have, I'm an MBA from an IM okay. I was working really I mean really good job back in India but right now I am just stuck at home doing nothing right so I have the skill set but still I cannot work okay. and staying at home you know he he goes out and works and I'm still sit I mean it's not that I'm jealous of him no of course it's not I mean, it's a question <laughs> jealousy but the reality is that hey each person uh, you know it's a partnership but then you have your individual careers uh, if that's what you choose mm -hmm. and so it's one thing if a person is unable to work for any personal reasons but we're talking about a situation where it's a government rule uh, that is preventing you from being able to pursue your own career. We have Piyush today as well, who's joining us, and he's actually an H-1 engineer himself, and his wife is on an H-4, so thanks for joining us. Yeah, sure. So, you know, I think really one of the goals of today is really is to educate people about how this whole H-1, H-4 situation is sort of panning out. You know, you have the president and a, a real negative sort of um, spin on what's going on and those of us that live in the valley and understand a little bit better realize how integral you guys really are to the, yep. you know the success of the valley and of course uh, the whole economy here so let's talk about your personal situation you're on an h1 yeah okay so an h1 gives you the ability to work for a particular employer but I mean like basically you can actually transfer it to some other employer okay but I mean like at this moment it's also creating a problem there are a lot of RFEs and all but that's okay. fine but in general as a general statement so you would say that an H1 gives you the ability to be employed work. by a company yep. and it does give you the freedom to look at other companies as yep. well and they can actually transfer your visa over yep. right yeah now let's talk about the thorn on the side the H4 yeah. now you have a spouse who's an H4. Yeah. Let's talk about that. What does that mean? Uh, so basically like, uh, so we got married and like uh, my wife is on H4, so which is a dependent visa. Okay. So she came here, we were thinking like she will be able to work on the basis of H4 EAD. Okay. Because like my employer is ready to apply for the green card and say, okay, we are offering you a permanent position so okay. that like your wife can also work on the basis of H4 EAD, which uh, like the previous government allowed. Okay. But uh, due to like the uh, present uncertainty where like uh, government has decided they are going to take away H4 EADs, okay. uh, my wife is not able to get work because okay. the employer are not willing to get into that uncertainty that we they never know that that particular 
person, program that, that person, person yeah person will be able to stay with them for a permanent position okay so because of that like some good companies not at all entertaining h4 eads so okay. even though she got capability she can crack the interview she she has everything but nothing can be done so on a personal level let, you know i don't want to get too too personal but what you know financially Living in the Bay Area is very difficult. We yeah, already know yeah, that. Definitely. And so without a second income, does that put a lot of pressure on you yes, then? Yes, it puts a lot of pressure. I mean, like uh, just having with one income yes. um, and maintaining everything, it's yes. a really difficult thing. And like, okay. uh, you have a lot of things to do. You ha you can't plan your future. You can't plan your of family. Of course, of course. You can't think about getting a home. So sure. these, uh, these are really important things uh, as you go forward. So and we are not able to progress in that. So that's a how. Thing. How do you then manage the two of you to keep the professional uh, stress that you know comes into the house as part of this? And this is a personal question. Yeah. Because you know you're you know she's obviously qualified. She can work. She's capable. She's intelligent, talented, and how do you guys manage that then? Where you know a person, <laughs> it's almost like somebody being able to have their hands free, but their hands are cuffed. Yeah. So, so how do you how do you manage that personally? Uh, personally, I would say it's really difficult. The thing, like we have tried several things. We try, like, so, like, when a person is not able to do anything, yeah. he, or she, or he or she, that particular person has a lot of things going in mind. There is a frustration, yes, and like, of many, course. like, no one wants to sit at home doing nothing Absolutely. where you cannot meet any other person. That's yeah. a really difficult thing. Of course. So, because of that, we have to like go to some other means, like go to gym classes and like do other things so like just extracurricular activities extra to kind of take that away yeah. what are you thinking what's going to happen i mean if the, i mean i was banking on h4 ead that one day i'll get it and i can start working but then right now with all these talks of h4 ead being revoked going on if that i mean god if that happens we are definitely going back i mean we don't have a choice, right? right I right. cannot stay unemployed for the rest of my life. Okay. Well, where do you foresee this going? I mean, uh, you know, with President Trump, we don't know what's going to happen next week or daily it changes. So where do you foresee this going? Um, At least, you know, hopeful versus reality. I don't see a, see a good future over here. So probably like we probably want to move out. Oh move out gosh, of United wow. States. Okay. Even though, like, you know, we had, a, uh, I have a good job. I'm willing to go somewhere else. Okay. Other countries are willing to take me. Canada, Australia, all are willing to take me. Why don't I go over there? Because, like, over there, my wife can actually work. Right. So, yeah. do you, I mean, do you now? Let me ask you a question. Other people in your situation, do you have any other friends or colleagues that have already had to? Uh, make that journey yeah, and say yeah, that yeah. they had to leave basically yeah, because it's just my, getting too hard. Uh, there are a lot of friends of mine in, in my company where they have like both of them were um, both of them were working. They bought a house like okay. like a really big house and thinking that they are two incomes and now one of them is losing a job okay. and they are in a situation where they have to sell uh, sell their home and they are going to move out. And thinking about this situation, I think like if this goes like H4 EAD is abandoned and like it's not there. There will be a economic oh. cri economic crisis as well. Like there will be like people who will be selling their home and there will so be. So you, you're predicting a potential crash again, like yeah. from the 08 time. Yeah, when there was a crash before, but this is going to be a a professional crash basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like, there will be a lot of homes people will be selling to uh, will be willing to sell, but there will be no one to buy it. Absolutely. Wow, that you know. That's frightening. Uh, it's a personal question mm -hmm. that you think that they're kind of doing this to make like, you know, a little, put a little choke hold on the situation where people won't be able to uh, come and stay here and, and you know, spouses uh, not being able to work will put pressure on that relationship to make them go back. Yeah, Maybe definitely. Yeah, because when they, the biggest blame which they give is that yeah, you take stealing the US jobs. I mean, come on, that's not the case. Yeah. I mean, how many of H4 EAD, there are how many of H4 EADs and then how many out of them are working actually? Right. And when you see the number of jobs in the market and the number of unemployed US citizens, the number of jobs are way, way higher. I mm -hmm. mean, come on, we're talking about the Bay Area. Right. You have plethora of jobs out here. Right. It's nothing right. like that stealing your jobs or anything. But yeah, if this does happen, if he, the administration keeps on going on on making that choke hole, which you said, yeah. I mean, it's definitely going to impact U.S. economy for yeah. sure. Because they, if spouses cannot work, even the other one who's working on H-1B, he is also supposed to move out, right? Because uh, it's not the way the life goes. 
So I had a question for you. Off camera, you mentioned that H-4 visas don't even grant you a social security number. Yeah, that's true. That's crazy. Yeah. And then secondly, you personally can't have your own private bank account that you're stuck with having, and I won't say stuck because you're still your husband, but you have to have only a joint bank account? Yes. So you can't have an account in your own no. name. So it's I, like I'm a prisoner. That's that's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, that's it's amazing. I, I, I had no idea, and I'm sure people don't even know that. So let, let's take that little bit of frustration. Let's move on to what are you guys able to do that are in this position? What's going on? What campaigns are happening? Uh, what are people doing to mobilize, sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, get people to think about this, that what's happening? How are we popularizing this right now, obviously on the show? Mm -hmm. but what are you guys doing to make a difference to hopefully get somebody to listen that, hey, this is not a good thing. Yeah, What's so going on? we are definitely meeting, you know, representatives of our, of our counties, our areas, and, you know, telling them about our situation and what we want to do. How do we contribute to the society? How does h 4 ead actually generate job when you start entrepreneurship? Yeah. And of course, we are making calls to our representatives. We are, of course, going through various Twitter handles. We are, you know, retweeting. We are trying to educate people about what this actually is. This is nothing bad. And this is like, I would say, the basic rights of people who are legal migrants over here. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are joining campaigns. We are having Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. We are making informational videos to tell people about what, I mean, to actually generate education about this cause, this great cause, because this is gonna impact our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. And that's not something we or anyone deserves to Absolutely. go through. Absolutely. So, with all this that you're doing, it must be very difficult to cross over that line because half the country is sympathetic with you. We already know that. They're okay with this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or they don't know much about it, but they're okay with it. How about crossing over that line to the Trumpsters mm -hmm. that think, hey, they're stealing our jobs, get them out of here. How do you do that? I mean, look at the data, look at the statistics. When in Obama's administration, uh, the h 4 ad was granted, they actually looked at the number of jobs which are there in the US market, the number of US citizens who are unemployed, and it definitely proved that point that in no way giving an h 4 ead is gonna take or steal the jobs, steal the jobs from US hands, yeah. citizens' hands. So, uh, I mean, if you are talking about convincing them or anything like that, we are not doing anything illegal. We are not taking away your right. We are not taking away anything from you. It's, it's a basic thing and we are in fact contributing to the cause. We are contributing, giving back to the community.